We're now going to talk about first order perturbation theory. So I've written the basic equation that we derived in the previous webcast at the top here. Um, and the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to contract um, with a, a bra, and we're going to contract with bra psi n of zero. Um, this will give us um, the energy correction. So that's to give en of one. Um, and when we do that, what do we get? Well, we get um, bra psi n of 0, h hat 0, ket psi n 1, um, plus we now have bra psi n of 0 acting on h prime psi n of 0, um, and that's equal to psi n of 0, e n of 0, psi n of 1, um, plus, um, well, we're going to get bra psi n 0, e n of 1, ket psi n of 0, but we know that we can take the e n of 1 outside because that's just a number, and we know that bra, n, bra psi, ket psi is always 1 for an orthonormal basis, so I'm going to write that just as e n of 1. So we're nearly there, actually, already. Um, the only thing we have to do at this point is to look at this first term, the psi n of 0, h hat of 0, psi n of 1. Um, and what we can do is we can actually notice that psi n of 0, uh, h 0, psi n of 1, um, is equal to psi n 1, um, h hat of 0, psi n of 0, star. Um, we can write that because h 0 is Hermitian. Um, and that's equal to psi n of 1, um, e 0, or e n of 0, um, psi n of 0, um, because we've just acted with h 0 on psi 0. Um, and that is equal to, uh, I forgot the star there, let's remember the star. Now E is real because it's an observable. Um, so when we take the complex conjugate again, we find that that's equal to um, E n of 0, and then we end up with bra psi n of 0, ket psi n of 1. <coughs> um, and that will cancel with the first term on the right-hand side. So eventually we find um, E n of 1 is equal to um, bra psi n of 0 h prime ket psi n of 0. In other words, if we calculate the expectation value of the perturbation for a given eigenstate um, on the original system, that will give us the first order change in the energy. Um, right, let's think about the, the, the second thing that we need to do. So that's given us the change of the energy. What about the wave functions? Um, well, we don't know what psi n of 1 is, um, so we'll do what we normally do in quantum mechanics, um, and we'll expand it in a basis. Um, so in general, we would write that as being sum over, let's say, i of um, a i. But remember, let's actually just remember here that a um, is going to be, we're going to create a set of coefficients for every eigenstate psi n, so I'm actually going to change that a i to n a n i, um, and then we would use some ket i, um, but actually we're going to use the basis set of um, the zeroth order wave functions, so the starting wave functions, um, so now we're going to write that as a sum over k um, of a, I'm going to put a bracket 1 up here to remind us that this is a first order correction, this is going to be n k psi n, sorry, psi k of 0 ket. So we're expanding psi n of 1 in the zeroth order wave functions, the starting wave functions, which are a complete basis because they are the eigenstates of an observable, and we're writing the expansion coefficients as a n k. Once we've done that, we just substitute back into the original equation. Um, that's equation 1 up here. Let me just label that. Um, so we'll now substitute into 1. Um, and what do we get? Well, um, we find that we have h0 um, acting now on the sum over k of an 
one k um, psi n of zero plus um, h prime acting on psi n zero is equal to e n um, of zero acting on oh dear that should be a sum um, sum over k of a n k brackets one psi k zero um, plus e n one psi n zero okay that's a substitution um, there's, there's nothing terribly startling there uh, what we're going to do again is we're going to contract um, with a general bra um, which is going to be psi L of zero. Uh, this is something again that we normally do in quantum mechanics. It's going to give us the chance to work out what matrix elements are, what expectation values are. Now when I do that I'm going to take um, the H zero at the beginning here inside the, the sum um, and I'm going to also assume that the EN of 0, because it's a number, can stay out the bracket, similarly for the EN of 1. So we end up with as follows, sum over k of a n k 1. Uh, we're going to have bra psi L of 0, h 0, ket psi n of 0. Um, we're going to have plus... Now here we'll make a matrix element of H prime, so I'm just going to label this as H prime L. Sorry, that's a horrible L. Ln, um, and that's going to equal En of zero, um, and we'll have a sum over k of a n k of one, um, and we'll have bra psi L of zero, ket psi k of zero. And we'll add on at the end here e n of one, and we'll have bra psi l of zero, ket psi n of zero. So we've um, contracted. We've made one matrix element. That's the h prime l n, um, and there are going to be a bunch of delta functions coming up in a second. Um, so this in the first term on the left hand side, the psi l h zero psi n is going to turn into a delta function because when h acts on psi n, we get an e n, and we're left with a psi l psi n. Um, so let me write that out. We end up with sum over k um, of a n k of one. Um, e n of zero delta l n plus h prime l n is equal to e n of zero. Um, now with the first term on the right hand side I'm not actually going to bother with the delta function because we know that psi l psi k, so bra psi l ket psi k is going to be a delta function so I'm just going to jump straight to the result which is a n l of 1, um, because if you think about it, when we sum over the k's, the only non-zero contribution will be the one where k is equal to L. Um, and at the end, we're going to have E n of 1, that's an n, um, delta L n. Okay, well, we've, we're almost there. Um, so the final term that we need here is to do this sum on the first term on the left-hand side. Um, and again, what we'll find is that the only point um, have I made a mistake here? Yes, I've made a mistake. Um, so this should be a k, and this should be a k. Um, so we have now, we're getting the sum of the first term on the left-hand side, um, and we're going to find that when k is equal to l, we get a result. So now we're going to see that we end up with e n of 0, um, a 1 n l plus h prime Ln is equal to En of 0. Um, that shouldn't be an L on the first term. That should be an L on the first term. A n L of 1 plus En of 1 delta Ln. Sorry, that got a little bit confused. Um, so that first term is an El. 
there are two possible outcomes we have to consider. Um, so the first one is when L is equal to N. When L is equal to N, then the first term on the left-hand side cancels with the first term on the right-hand side, um, and we get the formula that En of 1 is equal to the matrix element H prime N N. Now that's just what we derived up above here. Um, in fact, let me label that as equation 2 um, here, and I will say that that's equivalent to equation 2. Uh, the second case that we have to think about is, well, when L does not equal N, um, and in that case, well, the right-hand side, the final term, the second term on the right-hand side disappears because delta is zero, um, and we end up with the case where we have A N L of 1 um, is equal to H prime L N divided by E N of 0 minus E L of 0. Um, and so this gives us the formula for um, psi n of 1. So those are the formulae, the der derivations for first order perturbation theory. You'll see that the energy, the energy change due to the first order perturbation is rather simple. Um, it just involves the perturbing Hamiltonian and the unperturbed eigenstates of the state that you're considering. Um, the formula for the wave function is a little bit more confusing, it's a little bit less helpful, um, but it's still not very confusing. So all we've got, again, is a matrix element between the two states with the perturbing Hamiltonian, and we derive by, we divide by the difference in the energies. Um, obviously, if n is equal to L, that formula breaks down. Um, and also, if E n is equal to E L, which does happen for degenerate levels, that breaks down. Um, that's something I'll cover at another time.